The will has to be admitted into the probate court, usually the person that's named as the independent executor, that's the most common thing in Texas, uh, petitions the court, applies to the court to be appointed as the executor, there's a brief hearing, the person has issued letters testamentary, then they can deal with all of the decedent's assets. They marshal all those assets together, they gather them together. They do an inventory of those assets. Those assets have to be, uh, th that inventory has to be put into the public record in, in the court file, in most cases. Uh, they need to publish a notice for all of the creditors of the decedent to come forward and present claims, and the executor has to determine whether those claims are legitimate or not, pay the legitimate claims, deny the illegitimate claims, and then distribute the rest, the residuary, to the decedent's heirs. Well, in that residuary is the land with the easement on it, okay? <laughs> and that's where you need to pay attention because who these heirs are might have no knowledge uh, of the easement. They could be distant relatives. Suddenly they're in possession of this property. Again, this is not a traditional sale where someone has handled a title commitment and a copy of the easement. This is a situation where people find themselves owning a property under easement, have no knowledge of the easement, and could start making decisions because they believe that the property is unencumbered with the easement. So. Again, I'm surprised no one has had this experience, but pay attention. If one of your landowners dies, you need to at least be aware of that situation and involved in the process to the extent that the land on which you hold this interest is running through this process. 